guys, Tomboy61, and today we have our first game in the genre. Well, not our, not my first game, but the first one we're showing out on the channel. This is, of course, one of the new Pan Asian Destroyers. And let me just say, I am having a ton of fun with this line. I don't think they're going to be the ultimate destroyer, but they're one that I'm going to continue to mess with because I'm having way more fun in them than I was expecting to. Right now, like I said, we're in the Zhang Wei. As far as commander build goes, we are using Den Shijang. He's the uh, torpedo boat commander, the, the torp boat style commander for it. Now, I do have to say I was a bit dumb. This was my first match uh, trying out the torpedo focus builds for these ships. Um, they are kind of the build I would go for. But uh, in my regular builds, I have, I'm have i basically running a triple, dispersion, or triple concealment build with uh, Bay and Swirsky being our, our main two, but I forgot to put inspirations on the uh, on the commander. So as just running down the skills real quick, uh, we're running Subsurface Venture, look at me now, Perceptive, Knuckle Duster, and Unstoppable, and uh, the rest is uh, blank because I'm an idiot. Anyways, uh, we find ourselves in the cap, and we see the Fuso has decided pushing in is the best thing. We go ahead and launch our torps. Of course, these are the deep water torps, uh, so they have no effect on that enemy genre that is out there, but they are way more concealed and have a higher chance to uh, do some flooding and also have a higher chance to deal some modules thanks to that knuckle duster skill. And Fuso deciding to sail on a straight line, he's gonna get hit with uh, one, two torps there, get some flooding done, and then let's see if we can go ahead and finish him off with the second round of torps. Now, one of the things I have noticed about the tier four and tier five so far is there are not a lot of torps to go around. They seem to be very much in the kind of triple uh, torp department. So you have to be fairly accurate with these torpedoes, which is the downside. We go ahead and flood out the Fuso there, which is excellent. And <laughs> we took, I think, pretty much all of his health, 44,000 hit points. And I think we've really only gotten a salvo in on an enemy destroyer. Uh, we can see that that enemy Jeanway has sailed out of the cap area because we were capping right there and that tells us, oh, we we definitely, uh, he, he kind of decided to disengage and go elsewhere. Hawkins decides to uh, push in now and this is where we ha kind of have to worry. Thankfully, our uh, fellow destroyers seem to have laid some smoke that we're gonna hermit crab into. Uh, one nice thing I've been noticing about these boats is they have some pretty good uh, guns. I've, I real so so full disclosure. I definitely prefer gunboat builds. I I like the Daka Daka, and I enjoy when I get to make the ships go Daka Daka. So I will always try a gunboat build before I try a torp boat build. Um, and these guns, a little long on the reload, but when you connect with them, they hit like a truck. Uh, we're gonna see right here, we flip over to the AP and we just take 7K off the Hawkins. Um, both AP and HE, very, very strong on th these ships. And that's what I've really come to enjoy with them. Just because uh, being able to really gun down people is pretty good. There we go, another 4K, uh, just to get an idea. HE shell damage is gonna be about 1700, AP shell damage around 2100. So yeah, they they do absolutely uh, hit really hard. And we can see Hawkins still kind of deciding that uh, sideways is the way to go. We flip over to AP, because he's uh, is starting to turn in. And with destroyer caliber AP, um, they need to be flat broadside or else you ain't doing jack. Uh, he goes ahead, sonars us, and we just need to get a little bit of hit into his superstructure. We go ahead, knock him down, and then Molotov was also showing us some love. We have HE still load. We fire HE shell. I think we flip over to AP just because he's flat salvoed, but we don't need to end up doing that. We end up getting our third kill of the match up to 64, and now we're just kind of waiting um, to see and let the situation calm down. We do have a radar indicator. We know that Jean Wei is still out there and we can see now he is pushing in. He's spotted. We'll go ahead, keep ourselves in the smoke while we can. Of course, one of the fun things with uh, pushing and with playing these ships, or at least when you come up against them, is you don't, when you're in a destroyer, you don't need to worry about torps, right? It becomes a very awkward situation uh, when you are, when you're playing these ships and you, you come up with another one because both of you like mentally and physically and conditioning wise, you've been programmed to like, okay, I'm gonna get close, try to get the torp off 
uh, try to turn in, you know, you're going to try to torp the other guy. But you can't do that in these ships. So it just becomes this weird, awkward, almost AI-like uh, duel. Thankfully, we do end up winning it there, bringing us up to four kills. And, uh, well, we're on the Kraken hunt now because there is four kills. We need to get ourselves number five. We have about a third of our health left. We don't really want to get spotted again just because, well, uh, the guy we are going to be going up against is going to be that Queen Elizabeth. And uh, that will end poorly if he decides that we look like a juicy and supple target that he can hit. So we're definitely going to go ahead and just try to engage him with the torpedoes. Of course, like we said, they are the deep water torps. Also, we're going to go ahead and flip A because, well, might as well get the XP. We're grinding through. Now, uh, I do have to say, uh, Jean Wei is the first of these destroyers that I've started to really grind through. I'm currently close to finishing up the Fushun and looking forward to getting to the Gajamada. I decided to use the global XP to kind of get through up to tier four because I think that's where we, we really start to see what a line has to offer and see what exactly uh differentiates it and makes it special of course the torps do always make these sorts of ships special uh but you know overall you generally tier four tier five is really when you start to get that bread and butter feel of oh okay this is what the developers tend the niche of this ship or this role to be so yeah i'm i'm having a blast with them so far anyways queen elizabeth Looking like he's sailing straight, and we are setting him up for a torpedo crossfire. We can see the fellow uh, Jeanway, or the other, at least, the other Pan-Asian destroyer has set uh, torpedoes at not quite 90 degrees perpendicular, but fairly that way. And the good news with that is it's going to force the Queen Elizabeth to sail in a somewhat straight path, because he's going to go nose into them, attempting to uh, kind of sail away from them. The other thing that we're doing right now is laying our smoke screen. That is something we didn't get to talk to, but I think we will talk to you about in a different video is just how good these smoke screens are, but we end up getting the High Caliber and the Kraken, finishing off the Queen Elizabeth there. And guys, that is the little Jean Wei. I really enjoyed it. What do you guys, are you guys enjoying these? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, I hope you have a good rest of your day. See ya.